Hi, I'm Rocco Steno and welcome to Storymakers. Today we have Beth Anderson with us, who came all the way from Colorado. Thank you so much, oh, Beth. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah, you know, one of the things I enjoy uh, about doing Storymakers are meeting authors, but I also learn so much from my guests. And your book, Lizzie Demands a Seat, taught me about a person that I was not familiar with. Elizabeth Jennings was the first person to desegregate streetcars. Streetcars. 1854. What's a streetcar? Well, a streetcar is an early version of a bus uh -huh. drawn by horses, and it was the means of transportation for getting around New York City. Elizabeth Jennings couldn't get a seat. Was it crowded? No, unfortunately, it was due to her race. Uh -huh. She was ejected from the streetcar, but you know what she did? What did she do? She got right back on. Uh -huh. <laughs> I always thought it was Rosa Parks who started the movement. It wasn't. It was Elizabeth Jennings. Most people think it was Rosa Parks. They think of her when we talk about uh, desegregation, but it, it was going on for a century before her. And I think there's a hole in history where we don't know much about this time and this place and what life was like for African Americans in a free state. Tell me about Elizabeth Jennings. Uh, she lived here in New York. And she did. Uh, she, did she grow up here? Or? She grew up here. She was born in 1827. Um, New York became a free state. And we think that's the year of her birth, but we're not sure. She was raised uh, with part of the African-American movement, working for equal rights here. Her parents were abolitionists who were fighting to free the slaves in the South, as well as get equal rights in the North. Uh, one day she goes on a streetcar and she was ejected, you said? Sometimes she could ride the white streetcars, and sometimes she couldn't. She never knew. So she never knew if she'd be humiliated, or if she'd get somewhere on time, or she wouldn't. And that's kind of hard to live that way. So I think one day she just had enough. She was on her way to church. She was in a hurry. She wanted to get there in time to play the organ for the choir. And she decided it was time to fight for equal rights. Fight for equal rights. How did she fight for equal rights? Well, she kind of turned away the, the conductor's degrading words. You know, when he said, there's another car for your people, she sort of pretended she didn't understand that the way he was meaning it, and she said, I don't have any people, meaning she didn't bring anybody with her. Mm -hmm. And so politely, cleverly, she kind of pushed away his insult. She fought to ride. When he tried to drag her off, she held on, and when they did drag her off, she got back on. And for her, growing up with you know Frederick Douglass at her house and hearing about rights all her life, I think she probably thought that this wasn't only her fight, it was everybody's fight. Mm -hmm. And so her, with her father's help and the community's help, she took it to court. And she won. She won. Elizabeth Jennings' victory in the courtroom was the first time there was a win for desegregating transportation, a whole century before Rosa Parks. How did you find out about Elizabeth Jennings? I first read about her in an article about overlooked women in history women we should know about. And her story just kind of caught me. She was awe-inspiring and so spunky and courageous that I wanted to know what made her that way. I went on the internet first, mm -hmm. started Googling and got everything I needed and tried to really understand what, was, what life was like at that time for African Americans. You said she was overlooked and uh, right here we have a street sign. This is a, a copy of an actual street sign here in New York City. It's called Elizabeth Jennings Place. There's a story about this too. Right, and one of the things that really inspired me about her story was that she was still inspiring kids today because it's kids who got that sign there. Right. Two groups of kids. The first ones worked for probably about a year attending meetings and petitioning and they were not successful. But just like Elizabeth Jennings, somebody else took up the cause and carried it forward, some third and fourth graders, and they got the sign for Elizabeth Jennings Place to honor her. So, so boys and girls, this is a story about children just like yourselves who uh, worked to get a unsung hero recognized, and that might be something that you can do in your own community. So uh, this book is illustrated by uh, E.B. Lewis. And, right. and do you have a, a favorite uh, illustration from the book? I do. It's this one right here. And why is this your favorite illustration? Well, I just think it's really powerful. 
the colors and the intensity. Black men could vote at the time, so they could have been on the jury, though they probably would not have been on the jury because of the segregation and um, exclusion. You know, what that must have felt like for Elizabeth Jennings to see her fate in the hands of these people. Tell us about the rest of her life. We don't know a lot about Elizabeth Jennings, but we do know that she started the first African-American kindergarten in New York City. Right. And maintained it until the end of her life. Oh boy, that's something. So you brought some uh, footprints Brought here. some footprints. Why? Because Lizzie is a great example of how you follow in someone else's footprints, but then you also leave your own for others to follow you. And I, I believe she probably followed in the path of her parents and people like Frederick Douglass, but she also inspired all those people who came after her and tested her verdict on all those other streetcar companies and then went on to trains and buses and all the way to Rosa Parks. What are we going to do with those footprints? I'll give you red. Okay, you like red? great, thank you. We're gonna write about somebody who inspires us mm -hmm. and also how we would like to inspire others in the future. Okay, I am going to pick someone from history who I think is very inspiring. I'm working with somebody who is a current hero and a child. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. Greta Thunberg. Oh. Because she's 16 years old and she's doing amazing work to make people aware of climate change right. in our environment. And I think she's awesome. And I picked someone that you probably could write a book about, uh, Eleanor Roosevelt, because she really changed the role of the first lady in the United States because she was very active mm -hmm. and, and took up uh, causes. Okay, yes. excellent choice. Yes. So Beth, what do we do with the other foot? Well, I'd like the other foot to show how we would like to inspire others by our actions. Okay. I would like to inspire people to share books. Well, I write books to inspire kids and expand their views. Oh, so terrific. That's what I would like to do. Kids, if you'd like to have your own path of inspiration, you can by downloading the footprints on our website and you could share them with your friends. There are so many people in history that are forgotten or overlooked. That's right. And, yeah, and, and Beth, I wanna thank you for shedding light on Elizabeth Jennings by writing this uh, book. Thank you so much for letting me share Lizzie Demands a Seat with you and all the kids. So remember, until next time, read a book in any format.